All right, let's talk about automation modes in Pro Tools. All right, so I actually have covered automation modes before on the channel, but that was literally years ago. It was years and years ago, maybe, I don't know how many, a lot, too many. So what I figured we could do today is cover automation modes again, do a little bit of a refresh, and I think there might be some new information in here that was not covered in that ancient video. So let's get started. All right, so first of all, automation in Pro Tools is just when you're changing a parameter over time. It can be any parameter, right? You're just making changes to that parameter over time. So when we look at automation in Pro Tools, it's on what's called an automation graph. So this line here is an example of an automation graph. This line is an example of an automation graph. See how this one is changing over time? That's automation. Um, this little like, mm, it's not quite grayed out, but the thinner, the fainter line here is because this track is inactive. But um, with automation in Pro Tools, you know, we can add dots and change things over time. So this is my volume automation. You can see that here. And I'm just holding command and then clicking to add those dots. And then I can change things over time. I can delete automation really easily by highlighting it and hitting delete. Um, there are a few parameters that are automatically automatable. They're already enabled for automation in Pro Tools. And so that's things like your volume, mute, panning, stuff like that. So when we're working with a track in Pro Tools, so let's say this bass track, it's an audio track. I have the waveform view. Um, if it's an aux track, we won't have the waveform view, but uh, the basic idea holds is that you can swap it to different modes. So if I want to view the volume automation, it'll display the volume automation graph here over the main track, the main um, playlist here. If I switch to panning, pan left or pan right, it'll also display that. Another thing that you can do, and this is the way I like to do it, is leave it on waveform if it's an audio track. And you can open up automation graphs below the track as a little sub lane. Um, so that's what I have here. And that's just by clicking this little, um, I guess that's a square, right? This little square here. And then you can choose what you want to view. So I'm viewing volume. I can open up and also view panning. I could view both pan types since this is a stereo track. There are two tracks within it, right? So I have two panning tracks. And that's kind of how you open up or view your automation. It kind of depends on how you want to view it, but it's there for you to check out. So you can work with automation like I was alluding to earlier, right? You can add dots and move things around. Oops, I scrolled while I was doing that. Um, you can highlight things and adjust like a highlighted range of uh, automation uh, breakpoints, right? And you can work with your automation this way if you want, but let me hit undo here because what I want to talk about today is actually automation modes, and that's for writing automation. It's great if you have an actual um, Pro Tools controller to work with, right? If you have faders that you can actually physically move or pan knobs that you can physically move, it can be very intuitive that way. I actually don't have that. I just work with things in the box here. But um, basically what you can do is you can switch your automation mode. So right here where it says read, that's my automation mode selector. So I'm currently in read automation mode. If I do command equals to switch to the mix window, I can see that track here and the same selectors right here. So where it says auto read, that's the same exact thing. It's the automation mode selector. And you'll see we have a few options here. So there's off, read, touch, latch, touch, latch, and write, and then there's trim as well. Um, so I believe depending on the version of Pro Tools you have, you may have slightly different options here. Um, but let me know what you have in the comments below or what you're missing. Um, but anyway, uh, off is kind of the obvious one, right? So if you go into off mode, let me add some uh, volume automation here so we can kind of see. If you're in off mode, it's ignoring your automation. So it's actually going to keep the volume right along here on this little like um, grayed outline, right? The, the thinner line, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, so off is like ignore all automation, just chill out and pretend it's not there. Read means it's just going to read your automation, right? So in this example, right, I have some automation on my volume automation graph. So as I hit play, this is going to make my actual fader for this track move down and then back up. So actually, I can show you that really quick. I don't have audio running out of this, so we're just going to watch it. So I'm going to hit play. And you can see, if you look at this volume value here, you can see it moving with the automation. And then also I'm going to do command equals. And you can see it moving with the automation. That actual fader is moving. So they're linked, right? Same idea with the pan automation graph and the pan knobs. So as we get into the other automation modes, it's a little bit different. These can help you actually write things in real time as you're listening back. So if I go into touch mode 
And if I, for example, hit play here, and then I start dragging either this volume selector up and down, or same exact thing if I start dragging this up and down, um, that will help you write the automation to the track, to the automation graph. And the way touch works is it waits for you to touch the parameter, whatever it is, and then it'll write that for the duration of you touching it. So if you have like a controller and you're actually touching the faders, that would be the touch, right? When you move the faders. Whereas if you're working in the box, right, it's when you click on the parameter. So click and start moving the, you know, the, either the fader or the volume. Um, this is the fader too, essentially, but this option here. So let me just show you that really quickly and I'll show you both on the pan and on the volume. So I'm going to hit play again. Again, we're not going to hear it. Um, I might talk over this. So I just kind of decided it was easier not to hear it, but um, let me just hit play and show you. So it's not writing automation right now. See how it, there's nothing changing here? But when I click on this and start moving it, now it's writing the automation. You can see that it's doing that because it turns red. And when I release this, what's going to happen is it's going to go back to where the automation was previously. So I'll release, and it jumps right back up to this location here. Um, same idea if I switch over and I move things here, or if I move the panning, and we can now see that here. So that's how touch works. It waits for you to touch the parameter and then it automates it while you're moving it, while you're clicking on it, right? You don't technically need to be moving it. You could be just clicking and holding and it would be writing. Um, and then when you hit spacebar, like you just saw me do, right, it will write that automation onto the graph. So that's touch. Latch is kind of similar, but what it does is it waits. Let me clear this really quickly. What it does is it waits for you to touch, just like with the touch mode, but then when you release, it'll leave it where you released it. So let me show you that. So I'll just do it with this because it's easy to see visually with our graph. So it's waiting for me to touch it. And then when I move it, I do my automation, whatever I feel like doing. And then let's say I leave it way down here. It's now gonna just leave it there for the duration of playback. So you have to be careful with that one, but let me hit uh, spacebar to pause and it'll write it. There it is. Um, and let's look at touch and latch. So basically the way touch dash latch works is it puts the volume automation into touch mode and everything else into latch mode. So let's just experiment with that. And we should see that behave the same way as what we just saw with touch and latch respectively. So when I move the volume, it should wait for me to touch it. And when I release the volume, it'll go back up already to where the automation was previously, which is up here. Um, and with panning, what it should do is it should wait for me to touch it and then it'll leave it wherever I leave it. So let's try that. So I'll mess with the volume and it'll jump back up. Cool. Now let's mess with the panning. Let's leave it. Right? So it's still writing it down there for me, whereas it's brought this one back to normal. So that's how touch dash latch mode works. And again, it's in latch mode for everything except volume. Now, write mode is kind of dangerous. I don't really use write mode, but the way write mode works is it will write immediately. <laughs> it will immediately write your parameters. So if I hit spacebar to play, it's writing my parameters to where I had them, right? So it's writing the whole time. It's overwriting everything. I haven't even touched this parameter, right? And it's writing it. So if I had dragged that somewhere, um, it would overwrite it wherever it was located. So um, just keep in mind with write, you are constantly writing. So I would be very, 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 very careful not to leave things in write mode. And that actually um, brings me to another point that I want to make, which is if you're messing around with these automation modes, it's great for writing automation, but just to be safe, it's a really good habit to get used to doing um, of bringing it back to read when you're done. Just always do that. It's easy enough to switch things back and forth. Oops. It's easy enough to switch things back and forth. You do not want to accidentally leave um, yourself in an automation mode without realizing it. So just bring it back to read when you're done and it'll read whatever automation you wrote. And if you want to change it again later, you can always change it again later. So that's basically all the automation modes. Um, I will talk about trim here really quick though. So with trim, um, what we're looking at is, I believe, just volume. Um, let me know if I'm wrong here. Oops, I hit enter and it jumped me backwards. Um, let me know if I'm wrong here, but I think it's just with volume. That's how I use it. 
Um, the few times that I've used it, I don't use it a ton, but basically it's like adding a second layer of automation on top of your existing automation. So um, what you can do is you can kind of leave your existing automation in place how you like it. And then you can, for example, let's say I'm like, okay, well, this is good, but let's say I have like more complicated stuff on here and I'm like, all right, I got this automated just how I want it. But maybe like right in the middle here, like smack in the middle, I just want to bring everything up slightly. But what I can do here is I can switch this into touch mode or any automation mode that allows me to write things, right? And then I can hit play. And you'll notice that this here, the volume here is now it has this triangle, which is the mathematical symbol for change, right? So we're talking about changing this existing um, automation. So instead of overriding it, if I bring this up a little bit and then back down, it's gonna make that change to the existing automation for me. So if I'm like, oh, I like my automation, but I kinda want to give the whole thing like a little bit of rising action and then back down, or like what I did here, which was like up and then down and around, right? Um, it will make that change to the existing automation. So instead of overriding the existing automation to whatever parameter you bring it to, it'll make that change to the current one, which is nice if you're like, I'm close, but I wanna do this tweak and I'm not really sure how to do it otherwise. Um, so, or sometimes you are sure how to do it otherwise and you decide to do it this way, I guess. But um, yeah, that's the idea of trim automation is that it's changing the existing one instead of overriding or what have you. So that's the trim automation. And you'll notice when you're in trim automation that we have this gold line here. We have this change symbol here. And then we also have a little gold fader here instead. So that's how you can tell if you're in the automation mode. And you can always just turn it off when you're done. And, you know, your automation's still there. So... And don't forget, switch back to read. That's important. So that's about it. That's all I wanted to cover for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash noise. And mostly I've been focusing on the Discord server that we've been hanging out on for that. So if you feel so inclined, please check that out. And other than that, I know for my next video, I will be covering automation within plugins in a bit more detail, including some shortcuts and tips and tricks that I've started using that... Um, I don't think I've covered in previous videos. So uh, keep an eye out for that video next if you want to check that out. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. It's tiny, but I have a chip in my front tooth because my tooth hit a dog's tooth. So that's fun. I think it's the second time I've chipped my tooth. The first time I chipped my tooth, I was eating a potato pancake and I managed to chip my one of my bottom front teeth eating a potato pancake. So... My friends tease me for that one still. Um, I don't know why I keep chipping my teeth in weird ways. That's kind of a weird way, right? Potato pancake and dog, excited dog. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I hope you're all doing well. I'll see you around.